All right. So thank you so much for letting me be part of your meeting today. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you have heard of us before or not, but uh, my name is Russell Stearns. I'm the director of outreach at Angel Flight West. We're a 41-year-old nonprofit um, based in Santa Monica, California. We serve the entire Western United States. Uh, my job is pretty much to reach out to a variety of organizations that would benefit from our services. And then the other part of my position is to help our volunteer services team uh, recruit pilots that actually provide these services. And I'll get into what those services entail here uh, in just a little bit. But we are a nonprofit. And just simply put, we partner with volunteer pilots and commercial airline partners to fly people in need. Most of that's going to be healthcare need, but we have other compelling needs too. Uh, because we're a nonprofit, we're 100% dependent on grants, individual donations, and fundraising events. Uh, the pilots that fly for us don't eat their time, fuel costs, and any other expenses, so we're pretty grateful to have them. Um, this little fact right here, no one's ever really shocked at, but after cost and finance, uh, transportation is the number two barrier to uh, uh, people reaching a medical appointment annually, and between 3.6 to 4 million will miss a, a, a medical appointment um, that's only the risk of that only goes up in rural communities, uh, minority communities, chronically ill individuals, veterans, elderly adults, and then low income families. And I'll show you a, in a couple slides here the areas we serve. Uh, we do a lot of rural health care. So a lot of those people are going to face uh, greater risk uh, as transportation is a barrier. So we definitely realize that in our outreach efforts. Our mission is very simple. We serve the needs of people with health care or other compelling needs in the air and on the ground. Uh, we have a network of around 1,800 pilots around the Western United States uh, that fly for us. And then we also have a network of Earth Angels who are going to be found in our metro areas, and they provide the land portion of the transportation to the patient. So let's say somebody flies to like Huntsman in Salt Lake City. Uh, instead of us picking up a Lyft or a taxi or an Uber, which we would do, we would actually have a volunteer come meet the, the passenger at the airport and then take them to the clinic or the hospital or wherever they needed to go. So we're really grateful for those individuals as well. Um, all of our pilots and our Earth Angels participate at whatever level works best for them and their schedule. So sometimes we'll have uh, pilots that fly like twice a week and then we'll have some that do like uh, once a year. So we're just grateful for whatever people can provide. So as you see, we're a very big chunk of the Western United States there. We do have a lot of passengers from New Mexico that will go to Phoenix or Denver. So we kind of will go in and pick people up. We don't have a lot of pilots there per se. So that's kind of a gray area, but we do have Alaska and Hawaii too. And that's both a blessing and a curse, as I like to say. And we're all part of the Air Care Alliance here. So uh, most of our volunteers are going to stay within our region. Um, so, But every once in a while, we, if we have the resources, we might be able to get somebody like a specialist in Texas or something like that. But we usually don't fly across the country anymore. We did fly to the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota for a long time. But ever since they opened the Mayo Clinic in Arizona, in Phoenix, and was that 2019, we're finding we're not doing that as much. Um, most of, like I said, most of what we do is going to be for healthcare reasons. That's kind of what we're known for, but we do some other great stuff too. Uh, camp season just ended. Uh, we had a lot of pilots fly our uh, passengers who are young people to specialty camps, uh, kids who are burn victims, kids who've lost a parent, kids with cancer. That's another thing about the West is that there's a lot of great uh, outdoor support networks. Uh, we do a fair amount of relocation of survivors of domestic violence, human trafficking, and sex crime. We do transport medical staff to rural areas sometimes. Uh, we work with hospice, not only for the passenger, but for their families if they need to get home and act as caretaker. Uh, we fly canines as well for Canine Companions for Independence, uh, Guide Dogs of America, and then the National Disaster Search Dog Foundation. And then we do uh, clin outdoor clinics for act, uh, our military veterans for PTSD. So there's a lot of compelling needs. That's kind of a, a growing umbrella, the non-medical stuff. Uh, so if you think there'd be a need for that, uh, feel free to give us a call, even though you're not sure, because even if we say no, we can hopefully point people like in four different directions of where to go. So, and we might be able to help in unique situations if we have the resources available. So there are some qualifications for being an angel flight passenger in a, in a small plane. Um, you must be medically stable and ambulatory. That pretty much means limited assistance in and out of the aircraft. Uh, capable of sitting upright, wearing a safety belt for the flight. Able to fly in an unpressurized aircraft less than a thousand miles. And then have a financial or other need for an angel flight. Uh, we don't involve insurance or pay stubs or anything like that. So if people uh, need some, you know, it'll just be pretty much a statement. Like I so and so need to get to this place on this date for treatment due to financial constraint. Um, so that's pretty much that. 
Um, we understand most people have not flown in small aircraft before. There's a lot of frequently asked questions that come with that. Um, so we'd just like to address a few of those. Um, there's usually about four to six seats available on the aircraft. Uh, companions are welcome, whether that be, uh, usually it's going to be a family member, but sometimes it can be an advocate or someone else, uh, a friend. We need to know this ahead of time for accommodation reasons, as um, there's more weight sensitivity in these smaller aircraft. Uh, flights can be arranged to accommodate service dogs if needed. And then passengers can be accommodated as many times as they need. Uh, there's no limit to how many times you can fly with us. Uh, so sometimes people might need to go to, uh, to Huntsman every couple weeks in, in Salt Lake or down to Denver. Um, we can definitely help out with that if, if we have the resources available. Um, most flights are going to be 900 miles or less. We kind of talked about 1,000 there a couple slides ago. Uh, obviously, it's going to be different for those in Alaska and Hawaii. A lot of these smaller planes can go about 300 miles. So sometimes uh, you might have to stop like halfway on your route to wherever you're going. You might have to switch pilots, but sometimes you'll just have a great pilot who'll just fuel up, give you a bathroom break and go to the vending machine and then uh, be on your way again. So um, yeah, whatever, whatever we have available will work, but sometimes you might have your own, what I call a personal layover. So we've talked a lot about our uh, the generosity of our volunteer pilot network, but we're also fortunate to have partnerships with Alaska Airlines and a few others that help us when we uh, can't secure a mission with a volunteer pilot due to location, weather, or availability. We also raise money annually for our passenger assistance fund, and uh, those donations help us purchase regular airline tickets with the United and um, uh, Southwest, uh, American, Delta, uh, when we can't find uh, volunteer missions or donated tickets. We do offer a free uh, online self-paced course for social workers. Uh, it concentrates on a variety of transportation options for patients. It's about uh, one and a half CEUs and it takes about 45 minutes and it can be accessed at our website. I'll be sending um, Sherry the slides to this to distribute too, so you don't have to write it down. <laughs> Uh, we always make a point to survey our passengers. Uh, we're pretty pleased with the overall responses we receive. If five is perfect, we're about a 4.7, 4.8. So we're even happier to hear that a lot of passengers form a friendship with their pilots. And if they do need a repeat flight, uh, the passenger and pilot will sometimes seek each other out. This is a kind of a real surreal uh, human experience. You know, someone who, who needs uh, to get from point A to point B. Uh, and then we have someone who will step in who will do that. A lot of times the passenger is a little overwhelmed that a stranger would do this. So if we can see a friendship form from this, it's it's really cool to, to watch that happen. So this is probably the most important slide right here. This is actually how you go about requesting a flight. Um, the passenger themselves or the requester, uh, the requester can be a family member, a friend, an advocate, a patient navigator, something like that. They'll ask for a flight with a minimum of one week in advance. Um, Angel Flight West will ask for a medical release from a healthcare provider saying that the passenger is okay to fly. And then once those details are secured, our awesome mission operations team will reach out to our network of volunteers to secure a pilot. And then once they've done that, it does take a little while, uh, they'll email the itinerary and contact information to all parties. And then the passengers are gonna be contacted by the pilot uh, to discuss further logistics and details like when to meet at the airport. Uh, people ask all the time, you know, what's the catch here? Uh, nothing's free. Uh, and so it's just like life is the catch, circumstance is the catch. Uh, backup plan must be in place uh, because weather happens, mechanical problems happen, uh, appointment ca uh, cancellations, appointment changes. So uh, we just ask that there be a backup plan in place. And then um, we are round trip service. So after your appointment, whether you're gone for the day, a lot of times people will leave to the day uh you know, just for day appointments uh, and come back the same day or the next day. And then sometimes people are gone for months at a time. So whatever the length of their duration is, um, we'll ensure that you're returned home. So, and then, so that's pretty much it. There's our contact information, um, our phone number, my email. If you have any questions, like I said, I'll be sending the, these slides out. So was there any questions question sure. um, i know that you said you're working more um to do more flights out of this area like the rocky mountains um how many flights do you normally do out of like the wyoming utah montana area uh utah a lot more montana less and wyoming even less so 
we don't have a lot of pilots in Wyoming. The pilots we do have come from Utah and Colorado usually. We have a, a, a under 10, but they'll fly in to take people to Denver or people from, if you need to go to Huntsman in Salt Lake, uh, the pilots will come from the greater Salt Lake area and um, go to where they need to go and then come back. So I don't have a specific number though, sorry. That's okay, I was just curious. I know he had talked about it a little bit. I have a question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm out of um, Sweetwater Regional Cancer Center in Rock Springs, Wyoming, and I'm just curious. Do you are you able to fly patients out of Rock Springs here? I mean, I know we have a little airport. Yeah. I, okay, so you are able to you'd be able to take patients from Rock Springs to Salt Lake to Huntsman. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, that's good it's to know. This only... seems like a really amazing service for people. So thank you. Oh for yeah. Sharing. Absolutely. Yeah. No. Um, the only air, small small airports we kind of avoid are like uh, we don't see them a whole lot. We see them up in Washington State and sometimes in Montana, it, like the gravel runways. You know, uh, we 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 try and stay away from those. So, uh, but I know Rock Springs is um, didn't they have commercial flights at one time? We do still have commercial flights. We do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then yeah. So I mean, like that's yeah. That's that's great. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Russell, this is Lee in Gillette, Wyoming. Um, so do the patients and the caregivers, this, this is probably going to be a very dumb question, do they go through security like normal or do they check in at gate or, you know, to where the private areas are? Uh, most of the time, th these are going to be smaller airports without security. So they'll, they'll usually meet at a hangar or like the general lounge at the airport. Um, but a lot of these are what we call general aviation airports where there's no commercial flight. So they don't have to go through security or TSA or anything like that. Okay. So even if they're eating at a small airport like Sheridan, uh, they don't have to go through, I think there's what in Sheridan, there's one flight to Denver. Um, so they don't, they don't even have to go through any of that. So, cause they're gonna be on a private plane. It would just be coordinated to meet like at the hangars, like you said. Yeah. Okay. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so I was just wondering, so this is, so say someone has been driving back and forth from Laramie, where I am, down to Anschutz, um, mm -hmm. and they have transportation via car, but uh, airplane would be like more convenient. Mm-hmm. What would you what would you say? I mean, these these are of course you know people who are going through treatment and and not feeling well. Yeah, absolutely. So we generally have like a it's not uh, in stone by any means, but we have a hundred mile rule. But okay. um, sometimes you know sometimes if people are ill, they can't sit that long in the car, you know, because a plane trip will be like a quarter of the drive, you know. So it'd be better for them. Um, right. Even if it's less than 100 miles, sometimes if people need to cross mountains, you know, between like uh, Reno, Nevada and Sacramento, it's not that far, but you have to cross the Sierra Nevada. So right. there's there's always different circumstances. So, gotcha. yeah, that's fine. So like Laramie and even if they were having a consult down in um, MD Anderson might be a good <laughs> another one. OK, thank you so much. You're welcome. Hi, my name is Caitlin. Hi. Um, I have two questions. One mm -hmm. is um, I work out of the Jackson Wyoming area and we send people to Salt Lake. So when you all facilitate um, booking someone to go to Salt Lake, do you also talk to them about grand transport of how to get to the hospital? Uh, what we usually do, it, we'll have one of our volunteers pick them up or we will uh, have, uh, we'll get a Lyft or an Uber or a taxi and we'll pay for that. Oh, awesome. And I, yeah. you might have covered it yeah. on the medical slide, but what does it look like to fly with oxygen? Uh, we don't provide it, but it's more than welcome to, you can bring it. Yeah, because there's a lot of people with uh, altitude, you know, oxygen deprivation, like with sickle cell anemia, for example, you know, or whatever medications are on. People are more than welcome to fly with it. Our pilots don't provide it, though. Okay. And I have one more question. Um, and uh -huh. this, this, um, you just don't fly people with cancer, right? So with all illnesses or diseases, is that correct? 
Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, because of the rural health care, especially, you know, sometimes people may, might be like a couple hours from a dermatologist or they might need to go, you know, do a dental procedure or something like that. We can help out with that, too. We're not just, um, you know, major diseases, you know, gloom and doom. We can help out with preventative and, and uh, preventative and maintenance care. <laughs> Great. So I could share this with like our discharge planners for the hospital. This would be a nice service, a resource to have. Absolutely. And another thing, too, um, I'll bring up, too, that comes up a lot is a lot of people are life flighted in for whatever situation. Uh, they might be a long ways from home. We obviously don't help out with the life flight part because that's a, we don't do emergency, but we can get people home um, because they're wondering, how am I going to get home? I'm a few hours from home because I had this done. So we can help out with that. That's a huge service. So that happens a lot. So that's really good information to, to have. Thank you so much. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, because that does come up a lot in uh, in the West <laughs> versus yes, the yes. East. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Was there anything else? Russell, this is Amelia from Huntsman, and I have referred several patients um, and worked with you guys quite extensively, but, um, and I don't know, I logged in a little late, so maybe you covered this, but did you talk at all about the limitations of the pilots flying with like weather and um, in the dark and things like that? Yes. Yeah, we did. We talked okay. about the way that back plans were really important because weather happens, mechanical issues happen. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, I talked to a lot of patients that are coming, you know, they, they want the flight because they're coming in the winter time and the passage mm -hmm. sketchy and stuff like that. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Amelia. We just did a story on you. Didn't we, didn't we interview you? Yes. <laughs> it's so nice to meet you. Yeah, cool. <laughs> nice cool. to hear from you too. Yeah. All right. Well, like I said, I'll be sending these slides to Sherry and she can distribute them. And if there's anything um, I didn't answer, you think of something later or someone on your team would like more information, please feel free. My contact information's on there and uh, feel free to send them my way. So uh, thank you so much for uh, letting me be part of your meeting today. Thank you so much for presenting, Russell. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much. And have a wonderful day, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. All right. Bye-bye.